Well, hey everyone, this is uh, Craig Cannings here with another VA Classroom event for the month of August 2012. Great to have you here, and I know some of you are calling from all over the world. We have people in the morning, people that are late at night, some in the midday. Wherever you are, hope life is good, hope uh, business is good, and it's just a great to have you uh, in this event. And this this event is going to be, an, uh, this next hour, uh, you definitely are going to want to remove all the distractions that are around you as best as you can, you know, put your phone on vibrate and shut down your Skype and, you know, minimize your, you know, you know your inbox or do, do whatever you need to do so you can focus on what we're going to teach you in the next hour because it's really going to have potentially a real good impact on your business. Secondly, I encourage you to stay right to the end. We're going to be talking about something exciting and new opportunities for you that you're not going to want to miss, and uh, we're going to talk about that at the end. So be sure to stick around. Um, you're in for a real treat today. And so the topic for today is discover five web design skills every client would love you to know here in 2012. And I know many of your clients, one of the most kind of hotly outsourced tasks that they will do is design whether it's simple graphics to full-on websites to banner ads, whatever it might be, they're regularly seeking these types of skills. And these are things that you can develop in your own business in order to increase your opportunities, to ignite your income, and, and really do some great things in your business. So um, with that being said, I want to introduce a, uh, our guest speaker for today, which I'm really excited that she's uh, joined us today. Her name is Amanda Aiken, and she is... Uh, a the owner of Better Than Chocolate Web Design. She's also the founder of Girl Girls Guide to WebDesign.com. She is a fabulous and very creative uh, designer and instructor. And uh, she she says that she call, considers herself an incurable entrepreneur with an addiction to challenging the status quo, which is typical for a lot of designers. Uh, Seventeen years after first teaching herself to code. Uh, her passion for web design and technical empowerment led her to create the Girl's Guide to Web Design, a fun and feisty online program that teaches women to create awe-inspiring, totally customized sites and blogs on the WordPress platform. She's also been uh, uh, recently named on to Forbes list, uh, Forbes list of top 20 young female founders to follow on Twitter, which is really cool. She's also been featured on the front page of the Montreal Gazette, interviewed on CBC Radio, which is in Canada and quoted on sites such as Design Sponge, Mashable, which I know a lot of you know, and Entrepreneur.com. So welcome, Amanda. Thank you so much, Craig. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm just going to kind of pass the reins to you, and uh, you are definitely the expert today, as I am very far from being um, an expert in the area of design. So I just look forward to uh, all that you're going to teach us today. Awesome. All right, let's get started. So as Craig mentioned, we're going to be talking about five really sort of hot in demand skills that probably all your clients would love if you had. And my whole thing is kind of, I love teaching people that these skills that seem kind of unattainable and um, you know, a little bit either scarily technical or just something that needs to be left to the domain of official designers. I love showing people that they can actually um, learn those skills themselves and it's not as hard as you would think. So we're going to go through five of those today. All right, so skill okay, Amanda, number sorry, sorry yeah. to jump in here, but I forgot to tell everyone, those of you, I know some of you have used GoToWebinar before, but if you haven't, the way, you're all muted right now, so the way that you uh, connect with us is just through the questions tab within your control panel. So if you have a question for Amanda or for myself as we're going along, just post your comment or your question in that area that's labeled questions. All right, just want to let you know that you can uh, you can interact with us. So yes. Sorry, Amanda, go ahead. Okay. No problem, no problem. All right, so skill number one I want to talk to you guys about is the idea of creating highly customized opt-in forms. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples in a second. So I'm sure everyone knows what an opt-in form is. Um, it's basically the form that you'll usually have in the sidebar of your site or maybe somewhere higher up on the site, kind of the higher the better, um, that collects a person's name and email address. So this is obviously a big business driver for pretty much anyone who's in business online and probably most of your clients. And I know for myself personally, uh, a lot of my business is from um, 
from email stuff. So basically, everything I do when it comes to sending out emails is really driving my bottom line. So at the more appearance-based level of that is the opt-in form. And the idea of having a basic customized or basic opt-in form versus a highly customized opt-in form is an interesting one. So why bother having a customized opt-in form? Well, standard opt-in templates are kind of boring. They don't really impress. Usually people can tell, okay, this was just taken directly out of you know, a Weber or whatever constant contact or whatever email marketing service the person is using. And um, when it comes to having a highly customized opt-in form, it just makes things a lot more interesting. So it fits with the look and feel of the site. You can design them to be really eye-catching. You can even do stuff where you get into sort of psychology of color, and you're thinking, OK, I'm going to make the, the actual sign up button or the submit button a really bright color that's going to be super eye-catching. There's tons of stuff you can do with that. So let's see here. Here we are looking at some standard opt-in forms. So these will probably look pretty familiar to you. These are just ones that I grabbed out of my own AWeber account, actually. And while they get the job done, you know, it's all fine and good, they actually, you know, don't really have that much going for them in terms of panache, shall we say. So you guys are probably familiar with this. You would just go into AWeber or whatever, take the chunk of code, and usually stick it into, like, a text widget in the sidebar of a WordPress site, for example. But on the other hand, a highly customized opt-in form would look a little bit more like this. So these are three forms that I've designed for clients um, over the past year or so. And they all look quite different, as you can see. Uh, the one on the top left is for kind of like a playful, handmade feeling site that I worked on. The one on the right is more kind of feminine and delicate, and again, this, the woman's site was actually it's all themed around these flowers, which I believe are frangipani flowers, and she loved that I was able to deliver this for her, because it's just so much nicer when you have this beautifully designed site to have an opt-in that just fits with that, and instead of being kind of an eyesore, it's actually something that's you know supporting the overall vibe of the site. And the one at the bottom, this is actually a hot one these days. Um, you'll notice that more people are starting to get into the idea of using horizontal opt-in forms. And the reason why these are so great is that they take up less vertical space. So whenever you're designing a website, you guys may have heard the term above the fold, meaning that you want, it actually is a term that comes from the idea of newspapers. So if you make it above the fold, then you're going to be catching a lot of people's attention. So how does that translate to web design? Well, it basically means that you want to get important items, such as the opt-in form, as high up on the site as possible so that people are more likely to see it because they don't need to scroll down. And if you're having these horizontal opt-in forms, like the one you see here at the bottom of the screen in the sort of pinky coral color, um, that is helping you because you can put it like even above your header or right below it instead of it being a little bit more buried in the sidebar. So that's what we're talking about when we're looking at highly customized opt-in forms. You can literally do anything you want. The sky's the limit. Um, but the question now is, how do we customize them? So how do you take a basic AWeber form or constant contact form or the MailChimp plugin, for example, and how do you get it looking like something that's distinctly non-standard? So it's actually one of those things that's more simple than it would seem, but it, it all comes down to the application. So it's really whatever you can imagine you can accomplish with opt-in forms, but the secret is knowing how to make graphics, first of all, and how to style the different elements of the opt-in form using CSS, which is cascading style sheets. So CSS is actually a really easy uh, deceptively easy. Um, well, it's not that it's deceptively easy. I mean that it's easier than most people would think that it would be to learn. So basically, CSS is a very simple programming language, or coding language, if you will. Call, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And it is the key to being able to take a standard site or a standard opt-in form or a standard looking anything else, kind of like a default looking form or something, and being able to dress it up and make it look really special.
So that's what CSS is all about in a nutshell, and it's really nice to be applied to actually um, uh, styling up opt-in forms. So yeah, you can once you have these skills, you can customize any opt-in form. It doesn't matter, you know, what email marketing service your client's using. It doesn't matter if you're using a plugin or if you're just sticking a chunk of code into the site. It doesn't matter. It's if you use CSS, you can you can do it all. And when it comes to knowing how to make graphics, I'll just go back quickly to this this uh, slide here. You can see that, for example, this. Um, sort of hand-drawn looking yellow rectangle on the left, that is a graphic that I created as is the getter news by email at the top, and the flowers, that will be a graphic that's all set as a background image for the opt-in form. So just to give you a little sneak peek on sort of how the graphics come into play with the opt-in form. So that's number one, and the second skill has to do with adding multiple elements to the header of a website. So this is a really hot one these days as well. Because um, as most of you have probably experienced, whenever you're working on a website for a client or your client has an existing site, kind of the standard setup that a site will have is a very sort of rectangular look to it. So at the top, you'll have a long header, um, kind of like a lengthwise rectangle that spans from the left edge of the content to the right edge of the content, and um, usually comprises a single image. So most WordPress themes will allow you to upload a single image that will span the whole width, and that you therefore have to you know, put everything in that image that you want to appear at the top of the site. But what you can't do is you can't put in there functional elements. So you couldn't, for example, add an opt-in into the header area or anything else you might want to put in there. And as I mentioned before, the whole idea of above the fold in terms of wanting to put important functional site elements, especially marketing elements like an opt-in, as high up as possible on a page, um, that's going to you know, be hard to achieve if all you can do at the top of the page is insert a single um, uninterrupted header image. So if you know how to be able to put multiple elements into the header of a website, then you're really in business because you're going to help your clients with their marketing. You're going to help boost their sign-ups, their subscriptions, get them more followers if you want to put social media icons up there and, and that kind of thing. And it also kind of, um, it kind of locks you into this whole idea that everyone uses these days of having to put like a huge photo of your client in, in the header because it almost makes you think, well, what am I going to put up there? I have this huge like space for a header and I, you know, how big can I make the text for the name of the site and how big is the photo going to be and that kind of thing. So it is actually limiting in a number of ways. So what might you want to put into the header instead? Like what fun stuff could we throw in there that's not only going to look good and help with the branding of the site, um, but it's also going to increase results for our clients, which is, of course, what we always want to do. Um, you could add a video into the header, like alongside the main header image. You could put social media icons up there. You could add a search bar, because the top of the page is always a good place for a search bar. It's very prominent, and it helps people find what they need as soon as they land on the site. You can put an opt-in, or you could decide to leave your opt-in at the top of your sidebar, which is like a narrower column on the left or right side, usually, of a site. And you could use an arrow or something, some other visual call-out that's in the header area alongside the main header image, and that points to the opt-in and draws more attention to it. So that's another fun thing you could try. Um, or you could play around with background images that are put in there using, again, CSS. So you could have a bunch of different graphic elements of background images in the header instead of this one sort of solid block of color or just white with the text name of the site on it. So here's an example of a site I designed about a year ago, I think, that's got a very non-standard header. So what you're looking at here is the top, top area of the site. And instead of just having like a big, a big rectangle that takes up the entire width of the site, we actually have the nav bar that's up there some graphics kind of peeking out on the top left, and we have a search bar with a little watering can as the go button, as the submit button, so to speak, and we put some social media icons up there as well. 
And you can't tell because it's a static image, but the picture of the little girls leaning down over the uh, chickens, I guess they are, that's actually a slider. So that's one of those cool things you'll see where there'll be different images moving in and out, which is a really awesome thing to know how to do because um, sliders allow you to highlight key content or tell a really good, compelling story on behalf of your client. Um, when you put them up near the top of the uh, of the site. So this has a lot of stuff going on in the header area, and it's made really efficient use of the space on the site, and it makes a good impact. And here is another site that I built, again, I think about a year ago or a few months ago. And you'll see, we can see the header area at the top above that horizontal green line. And underneath it, we've got the actual page content, so the main content on the left and then the sidebar on the right. But if you look at the header, you can see that we actually have a video in there. So again, I can't show you because it's a static slide, but if you were to click the play button right here between uh, these two ladies who are having an intimate heart-to-heart, -heart, then uh, what would happen is that you would have this video that would play. And it's really, it really doesn't get much better than that in terms of real estate space on the site. Instead of having to stick the video further down in the sidebar, it's right up there at the top of the page, which is kind of a cool and unexpected way of presenting it. It's really going to catch people's attention. So just the question to, is... Just to jump, just to jump yeah. in there, uh, if you could flip back to that, that uh, slide for a second. There we go. And uh, yeah, I mean, for those listening, that, that is an awesome... I mean, having a video and a header is... Uh, I've seen it before, but a lot of times it's not there because of the templates you use just don't allow you to customize and do some of those cool things or even um, put your, like as you said, Amanda, put your opt-in box, build it right into the header so that it's every time they go to a different um, sub page within your website, they've still got that opt-in box and you're still, you know, you know, actively building your list, um, you know, yeah. where people are opting in wherever. So, so yeah, those sort of subtle, uh, and we'll talk about how uh, and a little bit about how Amanda was actually able to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment. I like I like what you did there with the video um, actually right in the header. It's uh, pretty pretty uh, innovative. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, and like you said, another good thing about being able to put stuff like this in the header as opposed to like in the body of a page or something is that it's visible on every page. So if it's something that's really important that you want people to click and play and engage with. Um, the header is a great place to put it because it's going to appear on every page. And yeah, not every theme will let you, you know, actually hardly any themes will let you put a, uh, a video in the header and even fewer themes will let you put the video wherever you want. So it's really nice to have that flexibility, which we'll talk a bit more about, about later. All right, so how do we create these non-standard headers? Well, most WordPress sites will have a standard header upload functionality. So that would just be like a little button where you upload your, your large image that will span the width of the site. But if you are using the right theme and if you know a bit of HTML and CSS, um, then you can actually place multiple items within the header using something called hooks, which are super cool and basically changed my life when I, when I learned about them as a web designer. Um, so hooks let you put anything you want wherever you want on the site. So you're not locked into any um, particular layout or you just, it's literally like a playground. You can just do whatever you want that will best serve the you know, business goals of, of your clients. So instead of having to figure out how am I going to rearrange what this client is doing around the way this theme is structured, you can actually work from the, the other end of things and you know create something that's really sort of a consciously designed site for your clients, which is pretty awesome and gets better results. All right, skill number three, migrating a non-WordPress site over to WordPress. So this is one of those things that people have a lot of um, sort of fear and emotion around. And it's kind of it's kind of funny. I mean, I totally understand because it is this crazy world of domains and web hosting and, and you know, sort of transferring content. It just sort of has this innately um, stressful quality to it. But it doesn't have to be that way. And it can actually work to your benefit because if you learn how to do it, um, and it's actually pretty straightforward in the end, um, people are really going to love you for it. So. 
more and more people are switching to WordPress these days, or they have a non-WordPress site, and they've heard so much about WordPress, and they know it'll make their business better and make it easier for them to update content and, and make more of an impact, um, but they don't know where to start. They just feel like, I have this site that's based on this other platform or a blog on Blogspot or something, and I just don't know. I can't wrap my head around how I'm going to switch over to WordPress. This is one of those things that's really great for you to know as a VA because um, it's, yet again, something else that you don't have to outsource if you know how to do it yourself. And it's something that's very, very high value because it does have that emotional aspect and people will be super happy when they finally feel freed by making the transition to WordPress. So, like I said, it's relatively straightforward. You just need to learn um, how to tackle a few different scenarios. So, you know, does this person have a site that's already hosted over here? Do they have, um, you know, maybe they don't even have um, a site at all, but they have some sort of weird situation with domains and hosting. So it's kind of a problem-solving thing where you just have to look through, okay, where are we trying to get and where are they now, and map out the steps. So the key considerations when you're doing a migration as we call it. So if someone has an existing site and is switching to WordPress, we're calling that a migration. So does the existing site need to stay online while you create the new one? Or is it okay for there to be some, some downtime? Because um, you might handle it differently, dependingly. And of course, you want to make sure that the site isn't offline for an extended period if you've got someone who's in plenty of business with them for themselves and they don't want to lose out on all those leads and, and visitors for a long time while the site is down. You need to know if there content that ideally needs to be imported into the new site. And in most cases, when people have like a Blogspot site or a WordPress.com site, it's super easy to import all their old content, so all their blog posts, all their images, all that into the new site. There's actually a tool that does that very seamlessly. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, how much downtime is acceptable during the changeover process? Sometimes there doesn't need to be any downtime at all, which is pretty awesome. You just need to know a few little tricks to make the process as seamless as possible for your clients. So the bottom line, if you can offer your clients a worry-free transition to WordPress is one of your flagship services, because not everyone knows how to do this, because not everyone has just learned to, to tackle it. Um, they'll love you forever. It's one of those things that people are always so relieved and happy when they find out I can help them with that. And I love teaching other people how they can do it for more people as well. It's just sort of a cascading effect of happy people switching over to WordPress. All right, skill number four. Make special graphics for your client's website to draw more attention to their products and services. I'm noticing I made a grammatical error in the title of this slide, which I feel I must point out because I try not to make grammatical errors, but hey, there you go. So clients are always coming up with new products and services, as I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. They'll have a new offering, a new sort of package of whether it's coaching uh, sessions or, or this, that, or the other thing, whatever it is that your client is, is up to in the world. And it's really important that if you want to help support your clients with making these new offerings success, they have to be highlighted properly on their website. So if, you know, you're kind of, you've got the standard sort of WordPress thing going and, you know, you know you can add a new page to the site and maybe you can, um, you know, create a blog post that would have a link to that page or maybe put a text link in the sidebar, I mean, that's a good step in the right direction. But you can do so much more when you are creating branded graphics that you create and then place in the sidebar. Because these are going to be much more eye-catching, and these branded graphics can then link to the special page, whether it's a squeeze page or a regular page or whatever that you've set up um, to promote this particular offering. So, of course, you can also put a link to this new offering or product or service in the navigation bar, and that's definitely recommended. But you can sort of hit them with a the one-two punch by having a more visually interesting call-out, which is the form of, in the form of the graphic you've created, in the sidebar. So that way, there are two ways of getting to the same place, and you get more eyeballs on the products and services that your clients are offering. So here's an example of, you guys may recognize this. It's a very popular site, Danielle Laporte's website. And this is one of the ones that I, I most frequently get requests of people 
how, saying how much they love her site and they, you know, want to emulate the look and feel and that kind of thing. It does have a very nice, clean design to it, clean yet powerful, I would say. So this is a, just a little close-up view of a slice of her sidebar. And she's got these four boxes, and each of them links to a different, um, you know, whether it's a series of posts or a, a manifesto of encouragement or her product or big, beautiful book plan. And they would all link to pages that focus on explaining what those offerings are. So it's just a nice way when you land on the site, your eye might not be caught by the link in the navigation bar or something, but you would immediately be drawn to these images. And if you felt a connection with them, you would click through and then ideally, hopefully, buy her product or service. So like I said, why are these kinds of graphics so effective? Because they offer a second chance to click through. And they're branded, so they fit with the look and feel of the site, which kind of ups the professionalism of the site overall. So you can learn to create little boxes or, or you know, just sort of little bars or even circles. I mean, they don't have to be a geometric shape. They can sometimes just be um, text that sits on a white background, but maybe in a cool font or something like that, or have a little, a little background image. There's really no limit to what you can do with these kinds of things. And not everyone has them. So they do seem kind of like a next level thing, and they'll help your clients feel super professional and just sort of more proud of their, of their sites and even more you know, like a real business than they already felt, which is always a nice thing to be able to do for somebody. So how do you make these graphics appear side by side? This is kind of a little bonus thing. So if I go back to this slide, you'll see that we've got these four graphics, and they're actually four separate boxes. But instead of them all being stacked one on top of the other, we've got two rows of two. And this is one of those things that is actually one very simple technique you need to learn. And you can use this throughout any website you're working on for any client. So if you want to have little bits of side-by-side -side content within the body of a page or a post, for example, you can use this trick. Or you can use it in things in the sidebar or things in your header. Um, because by default, with a website, things will stack one on top of another. But you can really create some beautiful design effects and use space more efficiently if you put things side-by-side. -side. And the way to do this is using a technique called floats in CSS, because you're effectively floating two elements side by side instead of stacking them. So that's a very handy coding technique you can, you can learn and one of the ones you'll probably rely on the most um, heavily if you are doing anything with websites in the future. Now Amanda, I guess the one other thing I was thinking about with uh, having, having those skills is I know a lot of uh, those listening, your, your clients are regularly having um, new uh, timeline photo covers created for Facebook. They're uploading um, you know, whether just images or um, edited photos or, or different cool graphics on to, to illustrate a point that they've had in their status updates. Or, and then obviously Pinterest is so huge right now with lots of creative infographics and, and images. And so um, I, I could see that being a huge area of just ongoing work for, for many VAs or designers that just clients are always looking for, you know, graphics in the social media space as well. Do you find that, Amanda? Yes, absolutely. I mean, and once you, that's the great thing about these graphic design skills. I mean, you don't need to have, you know, be an expert graphic designer, but you just need to know a few things about how to manipulate different elements in a graphic and, and you know, create graphics. And you can apply that to anything. So like you said, Facebook timelines, Twitter backgrounds, um, anything you can think of. And of course, everyone wants graphics to spice up the content of their site. So, you know, ideally, everyone would, in an ideal world, everyone would have a cool graphic that, that, that fits with the branding of their site and helps convey the message for every blog post, for example. So instead of having to go to like a stock photography site and find something that's kind of random and almost not kind of works, you could create something really like powerful and, and on brand for your client. So these skills are totally, you know, not just used for boxes in your sidebar, you can use them for anything related to social media or, or blogging or, yeah, really anything at all. Well, and it's, it's, it's important when you think about people using Pinterest, which p the major tactic now is you, you obviously have an image in your blog post, you, get, you pin it, so people are seeing that image with a nice little tagline in, in Pinterest. But if you could come at it with, you know, something that's a little fresh and innovative and, and, and captures your blog post in a uni unique way that maybe a, 
typical eye stock photo wouldn't do. Um, it gives you an edge, um, and, and people, you know, repinning you or or sharing, you know, sharing your content. Definitely, definitely. And a little, just a little side note: um, if any of you are getting into designing graphics and hoping to make an impact on Pinterest, um, a little tip I picked up recently is, which you can kind of gather just by if you're on spending any amount of time on Pinterest, is that um, the graphics that perform the best in terms of drawing click-throughs are um, graphics that use very modern fonts and pastel colors. Just FYI. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. <laughs> and I know you're into pastel colors because it was there is um and and those listening I mean how can you tell that a designer created this this presentation um, with the the cool color scheme you have and the font and some someone had actually asked the question uh, Robin says that she's a font freak <clears throat> and she was wondering what font did you use on these slides? No problem. I'm a font freak as well, Robin. Um, very proud font freak. Uh, basically, the font that you see right now, the kind of handwritten one, is called Loved by the King. And it's one of my favorites, so I use it on all the Girls Guide to Web Design stuff. And the other one at the top here, like the number five heading, that one is called Candy Ink, as in Candy Incorporated. So there you go. Cool, awesome. <laughs> All right, so moving on to our last tip. So this is kind of a big all-encompassing one. Um, create beautifully customized WordPress websites from start to finish. So these days, as you all know, website is the core element of almost every business. And a lot of people have one that they don't like because it doesn't fit their brand 100% or they feel their brand is you know, evolving because entrepreneurs tend to be constantly in a state of evolution. So there really is a constant need for um, fresher, newer websites for everyone within their business. At least every year or so, I, I'd say most people tend to want to do a complete overhaul. So having web design and coding skills, not only is it insanely fun and very empowering because you can actually create things and bring them to life online, but it's a really good way to make yourself stand out as a DA. So, um, the other thing I want to mention that sort of leads in from that is that when it comes to WordPress sites, most people think that you have to rely on a theme or a template, and what people will usually do is they'll go out looking for a theme or a template that um, best fits what the look and feel they're trying to achieve, um, and you end up having to settle a little bit. And what not as many people know is that there are actually WordPress themes that are more like WordPress frameworks um, that allow you to do a lot of customization. And some of them allow you to do just sort of point and click customization where you change a color here, you change a color there, you can you know, select a font here, and you can drag columns around. But there's one that goes a lot further than that, and that is my um, premium WordPress theme of choice, which is Thesis. And the thing with Thesis is that it lets you create beautiful custom designs that really support the business goals of your clients on an individual level. So I say here, no more square peg, round hole, meaning that with Thesis, what you can do is you can actually create a site that has any layout you want, like any look and feel, any design. You can put things wherever you want, and it's designed to allow you to do that and to facilitate that, actually. So it really lets you put things together in a very um, strategic way and make things look exactly the way you want them to look. So I want to show you guys, this is a little screenshot from my, um, my portfolio page on the Better Than Chocolate website. And I'll show you some bigger ones in a second, but this is just a little sort of visual snapshot of a bunch of thesis-based sites. So these are all WordPress sites. Um, they all have the amazing benefits of WordPress running behind the scenes, so it's super easy for my clients to post blog posts. Um, it's very easy as well for me to go in and make any updates I need to do to the design. All that good WordPressy stuff is there. All you know, the plugins I, I have access to using those, as you would as well, um, for your clients. So there's no um, no limitations there. It's all the WordPress goodness with whatever design you want basically um, created on top of that. So as you can see, these are all 
pretty, dramatically different, all kinds of colors, all kinds of different layouts and structures and background images and you name it, you can do it with these, which is pretty great. So I wanted to show you guys just a closer up view of some of these sites. This is a site I did, this is one of my favorites actually because it just feels so happy and um, lighthearted. So it's called the Happy Sensitive. And this is an example actually again of sort of a non-standard header area because it's like transparent so the, the blocky background is showing through in the background. I put some social media icons up at the top left to make them super prominent. And again, I was able to do this because I knew about a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, and um, the magic of hooks, which is one of the things that you'll learn about um, if you ever get into the thesis theme, which is lets you put things wherever you want, which is awesome. So here's one example. This is another site I completed recently, which I really like. As you can see, it looks completely different. The header, again, is not really your standard rectangular header. It's got like a bunch of layered elements. It's got like a shorter nav bar at the top left. And it has a nice, really sort of textured feel to it with iridescent feathers and stuff. Just going to take a little drink of water here one sec. So again, this is a thesis-based site. Same framework, but totally different look. And it was completely built around the sort of message she wanted to convey. So I was luckily able to do that for her because I was using a theme that allowed me to. And this is a site called Girls Gone Moto. This is an awesome concept, by the way. This is my friend Sally who uh, traveled across the US in an RV doing random acts of kindness with her friend Natalie. And they're both life coaches. So I'm sure many of you probably have life coaches among your clients. They're some of my favorite people to work with. And um, this is a site I did for them. So again, another thesis site. We've got more of a standard header going on up here along the top. Um, we've got, this is kind of cool, underneath the nav bar, I was able to put in um, an area that would have a highlighted featured video every day. And then the blog posts appear underneath that. So it's kind of non-standard in the structure of the home page, which is fun. And everyone tends to like those social media icons, the bottle caps, too. <laughs> and this one is more of a spare, clean design for an interior designer I did a site for. And you'll see here that, again, we've got some side-by-side -side elements. So this is done using CSS floats, which I mentioned earlier. It allows you to put these different graphics, little swatches of fabric and photos side-by-side. -side within a page instead of just stacking them one on top of another. Because if you think about using, creating a, a page or a post on a WordPress site and you're inserting images, it can be very hard to get them to go exactly where you want them to go to create a nice looking sort of collage effect or just a nice layout. But if you know a bit of CSS and HTML, you can put things exactly where you want them to go and really create the look that you can envision in your head for your client's site. And finally, I have a few sites I just wanted to show you to give you a feel in case you were wondering, OK, well, you've been designing for many years. And what about someone who's just kind of learning this stuff from scratch? So the following three sites I want to show you <coughs> were designed and coded by people who only had a few weeks of experience with WordPress, with thesis, with making graphics, and with code. So I just want to show you guys what you can achieve after just a few weeks of, of playing around. So it's really an easy and fun skill set to uh, pick up. So this is a site for a business called On Point Business Coaching. And she chose to go very bright and bold. This is a site called Body Love Wellness. Um, she's awesome, Golda, who runs this site. And she's been having tons of fun playing around with her site. And she changes it all the time. And that's the great thing about this stuff. You're not locked in stone once you have these skills. You can update your client sites for them. You know, Whenever they feel like updating them, you can just go in and make some changes because you know exactly how to do that without sort of affecting the rest of the site necessarily. Or you could do a complete overhaul. And finally, Daniela Hummel, who is a gorgeous actress. And um, she put together this site, again, kind of spare, minimalist. I love her little heart logo in her name. And she did this after only a few weeks of um, learning code and learning graphics and all that stuff.
All right. Well, Amanda, first of all, thank you for, uh, uh, yeah, just your insights and, and just sharing some pretty cool uh, websites that not only you created, but people that you know um, and have worked under you have created uh, created as well. So uh, with that being said, you know, over the past uh, couple years at VA Classroom, we've received multiple requests asking us, you know, when are you going to create a web design course? And I would, as much as I knew that it was like a really hotly outsourced task, I would constantly put it off to the side because A, I didn't have the skills, and B, I wasn't necessarily able to find the right person that would uh, be able to bring the type of course that I would want you to have. And you know, the, those of you that have taken our courses, we uh, we kind of pride ourselves on excellence, and so we wanted to find someone that, that was a great trainer and that knew, um, that could communicate design in a non-geeky way. Um, because there's lots of great designers out there Ask them to teach you how to design, and they will speak Greek to you for uh, <laughs> for the next few minutes. As I'm sure you can relate, Amanda. But, yeah. but what we want to bring to you is, and I'm so glad that I got connected with Amanda over the last little while here, is because she is a fabulous trainer. And uh, even watching some of what she's done, um, even for myself, who is I'm not very, believe it or not, I'm not very technical when it comes to HTML and CSS. Um, it was just so simple. I just understood it a lot more, and uh, I was really impressed with uh, the caliber of training and, and, the, and the good stuff that she's doing. And so, what we want to do is we want to introduce to you a, a new program, and it's not unlike any other on the web right now. And there is no web design specialist program out there, but I believe that for many of you, um, there are certain design skills that you can incorporate into your business, not only to help your own site, but more specifically to play a bigger role with your clients and expand the scope of services you offer so that you don't have to outsource it or if your client needs a quick graphic done or a banner done or they need a full-on WordPress site, you have the knowledge and expertise to deliver that. Um, and if you, let's say even if you are still on a management level where you manage the designers, at least you would, by knowing, going through this program, you would have the knowledge and you'd be able to understand what, it, what a design project looks like, what, what elements are included, um, and then how to do it yourself as well. So, Matt, if you flip to the next slide, I want to unpack a bit of what we're including in this, this brand new program. Sure. And we have actually a special offer for all of you that have uh, hung out with us for the last uh, 45 minutes here. So stick around for, for a couple more minutes. Um, so this program is designed uh, specifically for those of you that are interested in upgrading your design skills, your HTML skills, your coding skills, and know-how. And, and, know and, and specifically, this is for people that never thought that they would be coders, you know, that, um, that uh, thought this was more reserved for those people that spend a lot of time in their basement. Um, I guess us as VAs and <laughs> online marketers, I guess we spend a lot of time in our basement as well, but you never thought you, were, you had the level of geekness to, to do this kind of stuff. Um, or, and so definitely that's what this course is designed for, very practical, user-friendly teaching on things that um, before might have seemed complex to you. Um, it, for those of you that are interested in um, creating cool, customized graphics and websites for your clients, whether it's through Pinterest or a Facebook timeline or a full-on WordPress website, this program would definitely be for you. Um, you know, learning exactly how to customize a website from beginning to end, understanding the whole process um, is will be fully covered in this program. And then playing, a, uh, as I said, a bigger game with your clients. At the end of the day, um, VAs that have website design skills will be able to charge more. You will be able to offer more uh, broader services, and it will just it, it will just make you that much more in demand if you weren't if you weren't in demand already. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of uh, who the program is designed for. Um, so just flip into the next slide there, Amanda. So just a few details. This program is it's four weeks long. Uh, there's over 30 hours of video training, practical video training in there. Um, we have a couple live coaching calls where we'll walk you through some of the areas that you might need help or be troubleshooting in. Uh, as per usual, we're going to have resources, action guides, homework assignments, so that you know guide you through the whole design process as you're designing your own site or designing graphics. Um, and then obviously. Uh, You'll have membership in our, our specialist club where you can, our web design specialist club where you can, you know, connect with others, connect with myself, connect with Amanda, and that's always an invaluable resource. And then 
most importantly, for many of you, this will lead to a, another certification where you can add to your professional development. Um, you know, some of you might be social media specialists or book marketing specialists, but, but having the design piece might really complement what you're doing in social media or might complement what you're doing with um, in the book marketing space, even designing e-covers and cool things like that. So, um, so yeah, certainly uh, another good thing to add to your, uh, your professional development. So just uh, breaking down the, the four weeks for you, I'll just flip to the next slide there. Uh, so again, the course starts on August 19th, which is in about 10 days. It's going to run through September 14th. We will have some live calls in there, but there will be a lot of self-directed videos. So even though as we're heading to the end of the summer in, in my neck of the woods, um, you'll still be able to kind of work around your own schedule. Um, so week one is, uh, and I'll kind of let Amanda introduce each of them, but uh, week one is website design foundations and kind of uh, you know the basics. So maybe give us a snapshot of what week one will look like, Amanda. Sure. So week one is really going to be about, first of all, the sort of technical stuff you need to do to build a proper foundation for a site. So everything you need to know about domains, web hosting, migrating to WordPress, um, how to keep your site online if you're working on your new one behind the scenes, if you don't want there to be any interruption time there, how to install WordPress, um, installing and configuring um, thesis, learning to use FTP, which is a method of getting files on and off of a web server that, web, that most web designers use. And um, yeah, you're also going to learn how to set up your site, like if you want it to be a blog, a website, or both. Um, you're going to go through a, my patented questionnaire, which I actually use in my business. That helps you really dive deep to find out what your clients really want out of their blogs or their sites. And then you're going to work on the look and feel of the first site you're working on. So you'll create an inspiration board. I'll take you through a whole process for that. And I'll show you where to find um, the most inspiring imagery you can use on your, the sites and blogs you're building if you're not going to make certain graphics yourself. And talk about social media icons. And um, yeah, there's tons more in every chapter, really. So basically, the next thing we're going to talk about is your nav bar placing your search bar, your social media icons, developing your list of website must-haves, key plugins. We'll get into lots of graphic design stuff. So I'll teach you to use a really awesome free graphic design program called Pixlr, so you don't need to have Photoshop or anything like that. We'll work on our color schemes and create our header images. And um, I'll even show you how to make collages to make those sort of slick-looking blog posts that you see a lot of the time online. Cool. That, and that's, that's only week one. <laughs> that, that's only week one. Well, well, and and week two, three, and four, and, and we're going to show you our go to our uh, sales page here in a moment, and uh, it breaks down point by point what you're going to learn. So you can actually, uh, w in a moment, we'll let you go and just have a look, so you can kind of see uh, is that is that some of the things that we're you're you're going to want to you're interested in learning or feel that this would really add benefit to your business right now. So um, so that's all broken down in our our page that we're going to. And share with you here in a moment. So just uh, flipping to the next slide there, Amanda. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you a bit about thesis. And so our this course is uh, obviously the program that we've created is a heavy promoter of thesis, primarily because of what Amanda has said. Um, it's just so unlike any other template or theme out there in the WordPress environment, it's fully customizable. So you don't have to feel like you're you know, tied to a cookie cutter template, that you can create exactly what your clients need. And, uh, you know, maybe you could just unpack that a bit more, Amanda. Yeah, sure. So I am such a huge fan of thesis because I, I feel like it's, it's so empowering to everyone who uses it. Because like Craig said, it really is designed to facilitate customization. And more beyond just customization, sometimes when you think about customization, you think about some of those themes that let you change you know, a bunch of options. This really is like a springboard for your creativity. So you can, anything you can envision for your clients, um, you know, you could think about a really cool layout that, or an amazing color scheme or a perfect, you know, arrangement of graphics and where you're going to put this, where you're going to put that, that would perfectly support what they're trying to do with their business. You can do it with thesis. And I use it for all the sites that I ever build. It's that good. And on top of that, it has excellent SEO benefits. So literally the moment if you have a client who has a WordPress site and you switch uh, him or her to thesis, literally instantly, as soon as you plug in some, some info into a few boxes and it's super easy, 
your client will immediately have better SEO on their site. So it's got excellent SEO benefits that are super easy to use, built right in, so no more second guessing, and you can help your clients rank higher, which is great. Fast load times, it's really intelligently coded as a theme, so it's very secure, they offer frequent updates, and they all come up with these super cool new features that are very marketing oriented, so it's really a theme of designed um, to facilitate success and whatever look and feel you want online. And it has an amazing support community too where um, you can go and ask questions you know, for the rest of all time and they have paid moderators in there and you, any question you could possibly have about using or customizing these people will, will help you with that. So that's sort of well beyond into the future. You can also, during the course here with DA Classroom, of course, get support, but if you need support in the future, it's there for you, you're a permanent member of the community. So I can't really say enough good things about Thesis. Um, I just think it's like the ultimate empowering framework and the perfect companion to anyone who wants to have a WordPress site. Yes, I totally agree. And uh, the one thing I'll mention to you that this is a paid theme for some of you that know Thesis. Is the, the cost of Thesis is $87. Now, a couple, I guess a couple of disclaimers on that. Um, yes, we'd highly recommend you to take this program is to purchase Thesis. Now, you can use uh, the purchase theme that you have throughout the program, but if you decide for whatever reason that Thesis is not uh, or you, not the one you want, you've learned all the skills using the kind of sample thesis site you created, but you're, you're not sure you want to move forward with it, thesis does have a 30-day refund guarantee. So keep that as an option, um, but I think once you invest in thesis and the training, you'll find uh, you'll never look back because of what it offers you, and even from an income standpoint moving forward, being able to create those uh, customized websites. So, so yeah, we want to be upfront about that. That we the thesis is certainly going to be covered in this program. We highly recommend that you you invest in it, and we'll talk more about how to do that as as we move into the course. So, just flip to the next slide there. So, what we're offering today, uh, for those of you that have uh, hung out with us for a while, is uh, this is our early bird webinar special. Um, this program is uh, is typically. $397, and believe me, when you see the outline of what is offered here, that is really on the low side. I mean, there's courses like this that are $1,000 to $1,500 to $2,000, um, and so this is a really low-cost program that we're offering you, basically giving you the opportunity to, to be able to create customized websites, cool graphics, um, all sorts of other things. And so we detail that all on the page here, and until Sunday, so this is uh, coming up on August 12th at midnight Pacific Standard Time, which is my time, um, you can access this $100 discount code. So make a note of it right now. It's all uppercase, design2012. Um, the website is vaclassroom.com slash design. Go and definitely check out the offer. Um, check out what we're including in each of the weeks. But I, can, oops, but I can honestly tell you that this is a, sorry, a little bit of background noise here, but I can honestly tell you that this is a, a program that will have a huge impact on your business. So, um, so even with the cost of the thesis, if you invest in that eighty-seven dollars for thesis, um, just let me just just one second. Here. I'm just going to switch off my audio here. One second. Okay, just going to switch. There we go. Hope that's uh, better, so everyone can hear me. Uh, so. So again, yeah, the, the site is baclassroom.com slash design. There's a $100 discount there for you, and certainly that would more than offset any investment that you would make for thesis. And I would encourage you to do that investment because of uh, what the potential of uh, a customizable solution like thesis could do for your business, not only for your own website. Maybe that's where you would start. You would start doing it on your own website, even throughout the program and then look at how you can add this as services um, in your business. So um, definitely check that out. That is the uh, early webinar special. It's available till Sunday, August 12th, and the course again starts next Sunday, August 19th. So go ahead, have a look, make sure to grab your seat. We're going to have limited seats for this one because we want to have more touch points with you and more communication with you. So make sure to grab your spot right away if this is a program that would really interest you. So again, what we try to do at VA Classroom is, is stay very close to um, where the hot areas are, where, what areas we feel will help you to create more income for you, to, to expand your opportunities and keep your business innovative and on, on, on the cutting edge. 
And let me tell you, this program is, is a must when it comes to that area, just because there's so many projects out there that you could be doing for your clients that with these skills would help you to you know, increase your opportunities and, and your income potential. So um, with that being said, um, definitely go check out the site. There's the discount code. And I want to open up to any questions that you have on the program. And I'm just going to fix the audio, bring back Amanda there. Hey, Amanda, are you able to hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. All right, well, there were a couple of questions that came in. And I just wanted to address them real quickly. I'm just going to move my GoToWebinar over. Um, yeah, so just to clarify, someone asking again, thesis, yeah, it's an $87 investment. Um, again, they have a $30 guarantee, so it almost gives you a chance to try it out as well. Okay, just looking at some other questions here. Is the discount also applicable to payment options? Yeah, good, good question, Brenda. We have a two-payment option, as we always do at VA Classroom, and you can use the discount code for a two-pay, which really makes it kind of, allows you to really, you know, stagger your costs over a couple months. So, um, yeah, that's available for sure. Okay, just looking at some other question. What are the times? So again, Rene, what we're doing on August 19th when we release the course, we'll release uh, the first week of training content. There'll be the videos and the resources and the homework and all that good stuff. And so that will be something that you can do at your own pace. And then we'll have some scheduled uh, Q&A calls that once you sign up, you'll have the dates for those. Um, and that's when those will be live and a chance for you to bring your challenges and your questions and all, all that good stuff. So, that, so it's kind of a self-study, self-scheduled slash live program. Okay. Just looking at some other questions here. Will the sessions be recorded? Yeah, they're they're all they're all definitely recorded and uh, will be available indefinitely in, in the training area. Okay. So so a question here, Amanda. Someone said, how much existing design HTML and coding skills would one need to have to do this course? Yeah, you wouldn't need any. I mean, I, to be perfectly honest, I would say that when it comes to I like to say that. Literally anyone can learn to code, even though it seems intimidating and scary. And most people can learn design skills. The only exception I would say is, you know, if you're somebody who knows without a doubt that you don't have sort of a design-oriented bone in your body. And by that, I don't mean you have to have any experience designing anything, but you need to have sort of an appreciation for what looks good or sort of have an eye for what you like and what you don't like. And some people, that area just doesn't interest them. But I would say that if you have an interest in design in general, like if you, you know, little, nice looking graphics catch your eye, or even if you like reading, you know, decorating magazines or anything like that, then you're probably a definite contender. And you don't need to have any background knowledge whatsoever. You just need to be, you know, comfortable with the web and using a computer, which I would wager to bet um, all of you guys are. So there really are no, there's no previous knowledge required at all. Most people who've taken my course in the past have just started from scratch. And the cool thing is, another question came in, is, that, is this going to be too basic on the WordPress portion? Because I know some of you have a fair amount of WordPress experience. And I kind of, on the flip side, that's what I love about this program that we've created, Amanda, is that it has, it does have, a, you know, it's kind of an easy front entry for people that are just learning coding, but also those that want to really learn how to create more higher level, beautifully customized websites. There's a place for them in the course as well, correct? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's not really a learn to use WordPress course at all. Um, it, you will be able, if you, even if you don't have WordPress experience, you can certainly take the course. Um, and it will kind of teach you as you go along but you certainly won't feel like you're being slowed down or anything like that if you're already very familiar with WordPress. It's really about sort of diving in and learning what you need to know about WordPress in order to facilitate creating these beautiful custom sites. So it kind of uses WordPress as a jumping off point, if that makes sense. Cool. And another question, someone just wanted to clarify the time would, uh, in which you, you, you take the course. Would it be flexible? 
they were just mentioning they're not a full-time VA but would like to take it. And, and I would say that, again, the way we've structured it is that we recognize that you all have busy lives and that there, you, you can take the courses at your own pace. The, the training center is always available to you. But we will have designated Q&A times. Um, so as best as you can, try to keep up with the, the weeks. But we also understand that uh, schedules uh, can be all over the place. So, yeah, it is, it is self-scheduled in that regard. Okay, just looking at, uh, yeah, so see, that seemed to answer quite, quite a few questions around the self-study portion. So if you're away, you know, going for holidays at the end of the summer, a last holiday, you're not going to miss out. Um, you just have to kind of work, uh, work around your schedule or take your, uh, your iPad and, and uh, <laughs> you know, study uh, on your breaks or on the beach or wherever, you, wherever you're hanging out on your holiday. Um, okay, I, someone had a question regarding... The tool that you talked about, and there was one question, is there any other software that we have to purchase? Thesis is definitely the one we highly recommend. Uh, you know, and you had mentioned that they don't need to purchase a paid uh, uh, program like Photoshop. And you, you had mentioned the tool. Um, would you mind sharing that one again and, and maybe spelling it out for everybody? Yeah, sure. It's called Pixlr. So it's without the E on the end. So it's P-I-X-L-R. And it's great. It's actually very similar to Photoshop in terms of its functionalities and, and layout. So if you've used Photoshop at all, or even if you haven't, <laughs> just kind of good to know that it has a similar feel. So it's, it's nice because then if you want to graduate to Photoshop later on, you won't be totally sort of out of in left field because they're very similar. Um, so yeah, I, we go into great um, detail about using Pixar to create graphics in the course. It's a really easy to use program. And um, other than that, there's just basically the thesis theme and the other tools. I, I basically suggest a bunch of uh, free tools throughout the course. I try to keep things as free as possible so that there's nothing else paid other than just like having a domain and, you know, a web hosting account, and which most of you probably already do, or you might be working on a site for a client right off the bat as you work through the course, in which case they probably already have that as well. Cool. Yeah, and, and someone else had asked the question, when are the scheduled uh, live sessions? You'll get those actually in the when you register. But basically, uh, the one is in the first week of September, and uh, we may shift the date around just because we know that's a busy week as people start off. Um, but it will be um, Thursday. I think it's around the 7th or 6th of, uh, of September. And then the final one will be on the 19th. After you've had a chance to go through the program, that final session will really recap everything and it will allow you to bring – those final pressing questions that you have. So, um, but we will have that schedule available and confirm that with you. Okay. Um, no, uh, someone else had mentioned they have a tool called GIMP. Have you used uh, used mm -hmm. GIMP? Then? I have used GIMP. Yeah, it's. Um, I personally find Pixlr to be a lot more user friendly than GIMP, but you could absolutely. I mean, if you if you're using GIMP and which is another free open source. Um, sort of image creation and image editing program for those who don't know it, you could certainly use that to, you know, make make graphics if you're more comfortable. The same sort of principles can be applied to, to any program, but we do use Pixlr in the tutorials and things. But, yeah, you could use that for sure if you prefer it. Yeah, and as you grow and as you develop your skills, you may decide you might be using some free solutions, and as your business grows, you might be saying, you know, listen, I, you know, I want to upgrade to Photoshop or to other, you know, paid solutions. But we just want to make it clear that for this program, uh, you could certainly use a lot of the free graphic tools to help you as you, as you build out your graphics and your sites throughout this course. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Well, hey, I'm going to start to wind it down here. Thank you for all your questions, and thanks for uh, spending time with us today. And also, thank you to you, Amanda, for, uh, for your time. And I'm really excited about uh, what we have to offer our community here coming in the next week or so. Me too. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to meet everybody and get everyone on the track to web design empowerment. Web Design Empowerment, I love it. And uh, Amanda will be available in our social network. She is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to design, as you will see through the training. So just having her available is, is a, you know, a great, great resource as you go through this program. So if you have any questions, as you know, on the top of every one of our pages is a support link. Definitely connect with us if you have any specific questions about that. There was one last question regarding... Um, is thesis included in the price of the program? No, that's something that you'll purchase separately 
and uh, and obviously the hundred dollar discount will more than recoup that. So I would encourage you if you if you're interested in the program, jump in on that. It will make the program that much more cost effective for you. Now, uh, Amanda, just one last question for you. With thesis, uh, people are wondering where to get it now. Is it something that we should uh, find that they can wait until the course starts? What is your uh, any any suggestions? Yeah, well, we will guide you through the purchasing process um, in the first chapter of the course. So if you want to wait and just be able to follow along um, and you know know exactly what to do to install it as soon as you have it, you, then that might be a good idea. Um, you can go ahead and purchase it, of course, ahead of time if, if you prefer, if you want to get started. It's just that sometimes um, it's nice to have the, the videos to follow along with when it comes to installation if you're kind of eager to get going. But if you do want to purchase it, um, it's at DIYthemes.com, as in do-it-yourself themes. And they only have the one theme thesis developed. They'll give you a few different options for licenses. So you can buy a developer's license, which is more expensive, or you can buy the $87 license, which is good for, for one website. Perfect. Well, I sent that privately. I was going to send actually everyone, uh, uh, let me just pop that in the chat. So it's just one second here. So it's DIYthemes.com? That's right. Oh. Perfect. So again, it's not a requirement that you buy it before the program because you're going to kind of we're going to walk you through that. So you don't feel like you have uh, have to you know figure out anything <laughs> before you start the program. So, so we just wanted to give you a heads up and be upfront that that is the premium theme that we're using. We think it's the best, and that's why it's included um, you know as a recommendation for uh, for purchase here. So um, now one last question, Amanda. You you had mentioned that your your fonts were popular in another presentation you did. So uh, and they are popular here. So um, we just want to nail down the names again, uh, <laughs> the names of the fonts. Sure. Important. So the slide we're looking at right now, the one at the top where it says Early Bird Webinar Special, it's called Candy Inc., like as in Candy Incorporated, so I-N-C. And um, I believe that one is available for, for free for personal use, and then you can make a donation to, uh, to actually buy it for commercial use, which is what I've done because I use it throughout um, my branding personally. And the other one where it says register today for the new web design specialist program, um, that one is called Loved by the King, also a free font. I believe that one's totally free for any kind of use, if I remember correctly. Did you say Loved by the King? The King, yes, as in king and queen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And there's actually paid fonts out there. I've never actually purchased a font before. It's like I've always just accepted what's what's available <laughs> in whatever program I'm using. Oh, there are tons of yeah. I mean, once once you dive into the world of fonts, I find it I find it really fun and engaging. But you can spend hours lost in the, the font vortex, as I like to call it. Awesome. <laughs> That's a good word for it. All right. Well, thanks again, Amanda. Again, there's the URL for everyone. It's just vaclassroom.com slash design. The discount code is $100, and it's design2012. And uh, again, that expires on Sunday, August 12th at midnight Pacific. So we hope to see you in the program, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you, everyone.